it was different. It was so much worth. Honestly, I felt like throwing them into the road at this point and just kind of limping home. Hi friends. Today I'm here to divulge the tea on my mobility aid adventure because it was kind of a meandering adventure. So if you're new here and you'd like to stick around, see what I did there? Huh? Feel free to subscribe for more videos. There will be ample seating. Today, I want to share my mobility aids with you, how and when I got them. And hopefully if you're looking for a mobility aid yourself right now, this will be of help to some of you. So grab yourself a cup of tea or your favorite beverage, which if it's not tea, why? Why not? And get comfortable. This video will be covering walking sticks and a little bit of crutches as well, just an FYI. So a little bit about me. I have been a mobility aid user now since 2018, which is kind of wild to think about. I'm someone who uses my walking sticks on pretty much any day now where I'm walking around outside of my house. So I hope that my journey and experience will be helpful to some of you. So tip one is research. This is something I so wish I'd done more of and I really paid for not doing more of it in the end. You might think that a stick is a stick, right? <laughs> Wrong. When I was shopping for my first walking stick, pretty much all I knew was that they looked like this, that they were made of wood or metal and that I wanted mine to be <laughs> fabulous. Apart from that final, very valid point, this really isn't the case. Walking sticks and crutches come in a variety of materials, handle shapes, thicknesses and heights. Some are foldable, others are not, and frankly, it is worth doing a little bit of prior research before you buy to see what works best for you. Grab a notebook and make some notes. Specify what you need for your own purposes because every single person is different. I wish I had. Please learn from my mistakes. So, are you looking for a walking stick that folds up neatly into your bag? This was important for me when I first started searching for a walking stick, as I could fold... <laughs> I could have fold. <laughs> oh god, my memory, please. This was important for me when I first started using a walking stick, as I could walk for some distance without experiencing the pain or fatigue that caused me to have to grab it out of my bag and use it for the rest of the trip. Nowadays, I use my walking stick about 95% of the time, so my foldable stick is pretty much retired. Maybe I should have given it a little retirement party. Or perhaps, like me now, you require a stick that does not fold away because you plan to use it most of the time. The most important tip I can give you here is that there is one massive difference between the two. In my experience, foldable sticks are much, much less stable than non-foldable ones. It's, they are, they are worlds apart, people. Imagine for a moment that you are a tiny stick figure. It is the difference between using a walking stick made of a paper straw and a metal one. I couldn't believe how much more stable I felt when I switched from my foldable to my non-foldable walking stick. It was everything. This is something to consider if you're using a walking stick for primarily balance or stability purposes. Next is materials. Sticks and crutches come in a variety of different materials and it is worth trying out a few different ones if you can to find out what works best for you. The lightweight metal of foldable sticks is, well, lightweight, but it's pretty flimsy. Crutches tend to be made of a lightweight metal but are a little bit sturdier as a rule. Wooden sticks are pretty hard wearing and they can be more stable depending on their weight and thickness. Sticks made from acrylic, which are the ones that I use, are fairly hefty in comparison and they do take a bit of getting used to, but boy, are they much more stable. The next tip is all about handle heights. Oh boy, here we go. This is where one of my big mistakes comes in. Not long after getting my foldable stick, I was feeling that it wasn't really sturdy enough for me. I thought that getting a pair of crutches, as I had seen other people do, would be a better solution for me. Obviously, they're pink. <laughs> Don't judge me. I remember taking these on a bit of a test run while out for a walk with my mum, and honestly, I don't know how I got back with them. They hurt my wrists so much, and they just were not right for me 100%. Now, I do have flimsy hypermobile wrists due to my EDS, but I had been using a folding stick, so I assumed using these crutches would be no different. It was different. It was so much worse. Let's just say that now I know why people spring for the expensive smart crutches that help you take weight off your wrist when using crutches because it was so painful for me that by the end of the walk, I decided to just kind of try and get back without them. Honestly, I felt like throwing them into the road at this point and just kind of limping home. And that's when I learned handle type matters <laughs> quite a bit more than you might be thinking. There are different types of handles available for both crutches and sticks. And doing your research here is vital so you don't end up like me, with two useless pink crutches leaning up against a wall forever. 
One of my current sticks has this T handle and the other one has a traditional curved handle. For my flimsy wrists, I find the curve handle so much easier to use. I've never had any pain with the curve handle, whereas I can start to struggle a bit with my wrists if I'm using the T handle for long periods of time. The T handle also adds significant weight to the specific type of stick. So from now on, it is curve handles all the way for me. Next up is customization and accessories. Okay, it's time for the exciting part. Okay, wait, wait, first I have to add one little caveat. Please, please look up a reliable guide on how to properly measure yourself for a walking stick before you buy one. And don't think that a centimeter here or there won't make a difference because <laughs> it does, folks. As someone who owns sticks of three different lengths and widely considers myself to have messed it up several times before I got it right, I can assure you it does make a huge difference. So I am tall. I'm about six foot or 182.9 centimeters. For those of you who aren't living in a crazed imperial versus metric time warp like we do in the UK. I remember being on the website where I planned to buy my very first walking stick from and feeling that rising sense of panic as I selected the tallest available option and was seeing fewer and fewer nice looking options. For younger people especially, getting your first mobility aid can be quite an uncomfortable, difficult and stigmatized experience. Being able to choose one that looks less sterile medical fever dream and more personalized makes a huge difference. Apparently the only people of my height who are using a walking stick prefer a nice gray number. As a result, my foldable walking stick is a few centimeters too short for me. I don't blame myself for this because honestly at that point especially I needed to be using something that didn't make me feel any more uncomfortable than I was already feeling. My second time purchasing a stick, I did measure myself properly according to the guide except I forgot to wear my everyday shoes while I was measuring. So make sure that you're ticking all the boxes when getting measured and find someone else to help you because it's pretty much impossible to do by yourself. Okay, time for the fun stuff. Customization, colors, add-ons, personality. The benefit to purchasing your own mobility aid is that you're really able to make them your own. This is a huge part of making people feel more comfortable using their aids and it can lead to some pretty interesting conversations too. So yes, parts of purchasing mobility aid can be fun. Luckily, the selection does also seem to be improving at every price point and height point. The personalized aspect of my folding stick is that it is pink, but my second stick is purple with bubbles inside, has a soft gel hand grip, which is so much more comfortable. I will never be going back. You can pry it from my cold, dead, but very comfortable hands. My third stick is pink. It has a froggy wrist strap and yes, it does indeed light up. Perfect for winter evenings when if one more person kicks your stick, you are going to be urged to return the favor and not in kind. Wrist straps are a cost-effective, easy way to customize your mobility aid. After using my purple stick for about a year without a wrist strap, it has made juggling all of my stuff so much easier. Well, I'm not handing it off to Kieran, of course. You can get different colored ferrules from the bottom of your stick and even use custom decals for a print of your choice. I highly recommend customizing your mobility aid. Honestly, it does make such a difference. Okay, time for a wrap up. I really hope these tips have been helpful to you and please feel free to ask any more questions you have about mobility aids down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you're new to this channel and you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click subscribe for more videos on disability, positivity, and lifestyle content. Also, I'm very intrigued to hear if anybody has any videos they would like me to make. So if you do have an idea that you want me to cover, please do let me know as well. Thank you so much for being here, friends, and I'll see you next time. Love and spoons. Bye.